Imagine if you could upload an image with Unreal Engine 5, create an entire playable map just based on that image. Well, with Polygon Flow Dash, that is something you can do. This kind of technology is just exploding in capability, and over the coming months, I'm going to be showing you some of the craziest tools that you can use to make games faster than ever before. And if you are a game developer, I highly recommend you subscribing to this channel because I am going to show you some things that are, quite frankly, just unfair to know about. Now, the first thing we're going to be talking about is Polygon Flow Dash. This is something that our development team has been looking a lot at, and many other people have been very interested in this procedural generation tool for level creation. And the stuff that it can do is pretty impressive, because not only can you do small-scale procedural generation, as long as you configure it correctly to create bridges, roads, or all sorts of other things, you can do large-scale procedural generation as well. And it even has an AI assistant built into it so it can help you get directions on how to create certain types of effects or certain types of things, or you can even upload images and say, hey, help me to create a level that looks like this image, and it will tell you exactly what to do. Now, this is pretty different from a, another tool that I've shown on this channel called Sibever, and Sibever is also very cool. It is another level design tool where you can literally draw the map that you want, and it will generate an entire map based on that drawing, even placing down buildings and all sorts of other stuff. But Polygon Flow Dash is integrated directly into Unreal Engine 5. So this is something that is going to allow you to have a way more seamless integration with your developer environment, where it even has integration with Unreal Engine Fab. So you can bring in assets, you can easily set up procedural tools, utilizing all of those assets and create levels really, really fast, not only with a bunch of high quality assets, but inside of Unreal Engine, instead of using something like Sibever, where you have to do the general outside of Unreal Engine and then import it in, which isn't a massive issue, but those tiny little hiccups in the development workflow can be all of the difference. Now, Unreal Engine 5 already has some pretty incredible procedural generation tools out of the box that you can utilize. In fact, there was a really cool demo that they showed off last year called Electric Dreams, which if you want to download that, I'll put a link down in the description, where it really showed off the power of procedural generation with Unreal Engine 5. But I think that what Dash does is it just takes that PCG workflow and makes it easier, whereas Unreal Engine PCGs are powerful, but they're a little bit more complicated to use, whereas Dash, it's much more seamless and it just has a better workflow. Although, we'll have to see with future Unreal Engine updates, I mean, with the way that Epic Games and Tencent have been going, they might as well just acquire Dash and fold that into Unreal Engine 5 itself. That could happen, but at least for now, Dash does some really, really cool things that even with Unreal Engine PCGs, you're just not going to be able to do as easily. But if you are interested in following more content creators and game developers who are building procedural generation systems, I'm going to talk about one of the YouTubers that I have been following recently, and his name is Azil Arts. If you want to go check him out, he has been creating some really, really cool tools, one of which is called Massive World, and it allows you to basically do just that. You can create massive landscapes with really detailed environments really easily, really fast. And this is something that I am really hoping is going to become more common in the future. I think level design is important. I think level designers are really, really cool when they get detailed and they create really interesting environments that have that level of immersion that can only come from someone getting in there and hand placing a bunch of stuff. But in order to get started on that stuff, there's a lot of groundwork that goes into building a giant map that takes a lot of time. And this is stuff that, whether it's done by a person, whether it's done by a robot, it's not really going to make that much of a difference. So being able to generate massive landscapes that your level designers can then use and go into and find detail is going to be able to save you a lot of time, but it's going to allow you to be able to create the exact same 
fidelity of level that you would be able to create through other methods. And I think as PCG becomes more and more commonplace, and as we see it in more and more games, you look at No Man's Sky, I mean, that's not Unreal Engine, but the same concept where they have been not just building procedural generation, but they've been putting a lot of work into figuring out how to make procedural generation that has depth, that has a level of interest that keeps the player going. And I think combining AI, procedural generation, and human design is going to be the right way forward for small indie teams to create massively multiplayer or just large-scale games that have a lot of variety and a lot of terrain that still feel really AAA quality with that level of depth that you need in order to keep players engaged. Who knows? We might be able to see stuff like Assassin's Creed-style games that are going to be made for a fraction of the cost by small-scale indie teams. We've already been seeing some one-man teams creating Things that are pretty similar to No Man's Sky or Star Citizen all by themselves. We're already seeing things like this, for instance, with the game Spaceborne Part 2, which was created by a solo developer called Barak. And in this game, he has created a massive amount of scale with planets that you can land on, a whole bunch of different types of ships, bases, factions, a lot of different things that he probably would not have been able to do if it hasn't been for a lot of the technology that has been coming out over the last couple of years that has been enabling this kind of scale of development for small-scale developers. Even games like BattleBit, which came out a while ago now, was created by a laughably small team, yet the things that they accomplished were absolutely massive. They had large-scale maps with vehicles and infantry and all of the features that you would expect from a AAA title like Battlefield. Now, granted, they opted for a more low-poly style which is an easier style to pull off, and because of the resource limitations, that's an understandable choice. But in the near future, doing games like BattleBit, but with full photorealism, with these kinds of tools, with the kinds of assets that you're going to have available, like through Fab and elsewhere, that is going to be easier and easier. Indie teams are going to be able to do absolutely incredible things in the near future and following projects like this, but more importantly, also following the tools that they use is going to be very important for other developers who want to do similar things. Besides that, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe because I'm going to be showing you a lot more cool stuff in the future and make sure you go give Azeal Arts a subscribe as well. And if you want to join our Discord community for AI game development, Link is down in the description, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.